To see this Hylas 56, we took a little trip just outside the boat show to a beautiful place. And it is, I've got to say at the beginning of this, slightly confusing because what we're looking <laughs> at is a second-hand Hylas. And as we know, Hylas, fantastic boats. The stand inside Annapolis itself was for blue water boats because they have bought one of the hulls that they're just sort of keeping alive because yeah. Hylas have moved on, they're making different sorts of boats. We'll talk about it more at the end, but have a look at this boat. It's fantastic. You, you're taking us to see an early iteration then, are you, of, of uh, yeah, the, so, the Blue Water Yacht? So uh, the Blue Water Yachts, originally, we originally built this. Uh, th this was as a Hylas 56. I built 28 of those under the Hylas name. Yeah. Um, but it's a Freer's design, and that's been the most important aspect of it. Great, great design, great hull shape, great ballast displacement ratio numbers. Um, just a wonderful boat to sail. Looking at the figures is an important part of selecting a good offshore boat. Remember, we're trying to select a good boat for long-term cruising here. The figures for the Hylas 56 are excellent. If we focus on the capsize screening formula, as we were talking about that in the outbound review, the Hylas actually comes out very slightly better than the outbound with a 1.72 against outbound's 1.78. This isn't just about ultimate safety, but about comfort as well. A good stiff boat that'll stand on its feet when others are running the rail in the water makes a good cruising boat. And that's what we're trying to point out in these reviews, what makes a good cruising boat as against a boat that's designed for other things. It's easy to see from the figures what is and isn't designed for that purpose. Remember, a figure over two is not recommended for offshore sailing. Why then do Beneteau insist on calling their 41 the Oceanis? With a capsize screening ratio of 2.14, if you want to cross oceans, there are much better choices. One of the first things you notice this is a really good idea, isn't it, that people just don't do. These are, these are great. Uh, we do these at 34 inches, 34 inch high. It's, yeah. uh, it's uh, great for the hip, you know, yeah. guys like us, it's great to entertain. Seven yeah. cockpits, opens this area up to be able to get out, stretch your legs. Um, but at 34 inches, uh, not only is it comfortable, but we do this as inch and a quarter, thick walled stainless. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. very, you know, it's, it's stout. Uh, you can basically use it for entertainment, use it for safety. We do up to midship as standard, but yeah. I've done full rails if an owner wants to. Yeah. And with the new design, uh, we have moved these rails outboard uh, into the integrated bulwark. Well, let's, let's have a walk up then and just see, see what we've got. So you've got a uh, uh, good full bimini. Through, through the whole thing and actually got a good area here, haven't you? I mean, it, I know it's not the, the modern sort of idea of having these enormous uh, no, areas outside, but it's, this is much safer, isn't it? Well, it's safer, but also I don't think people kind of give it enough credit for the amount of space. They start to realize how much space it really is once you're in it. I mean, everything was kind of ergonomically thought out. You know, we wanted to make sure that somebody who's over six feet long could sleep comfortably on either side, forward of the wheel without any uh, interference with anybody at the helm. Yeah. So, and this is set up to be able to do four people on either side, you know, by the pedestal and four people across the back. So actually, dimensionally, you can fit 12 people here. Yeah, works well, let's let's go forward. So usual things that you need, good uh, hand holds all the way yep, right. through. Yeah, we do mostly stainless. Some owners will do teak, but we try to stay with stainless just to keep it, you know. Yeah. Do you as ever? Friendly as possible. I mean, you, this is this is you can see obviously lead back. My personal preference isn't to have that. So if I were buying one of these and I said I want to do it stuff from the mast, can you fit yeah, granny bars can, or yeah, anything we like can that? Yeah, do protective rails there. We've done yeah. that. Um, it all depends on the rig, right? So I've got owners who are more than halfway through their production of their boat, they still haven't decided on their rig. <laughs> yeah. You know, they'll go sailing. We'll take them in mass, take them in yeah. boom. The majority still go in mass, and they I think they like the comfort level for it. Yeah. Um, and if you plan well, it's. There, yeah. Listen, you can argue either way. And I know you're a figures man, so you've got the, the figures for this. It's stiff enough, even if you've got that weight aloft, because they go for in 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 mast furling, and you've got all that weight up there. Well, so it's interesting though, because there's so much weight in the, this. Is why actually, I've an owner who's an engineer at MIT, uh, who actually went through the numbers and pointed out the difference in the writing moment is less than five percent mm. between in boom and in mast. Yeah. Because there's so much weight in the in boom system, and it's well above center of effort, well above center of gravity. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of weight here to consider, and. Um, and then there's the track, and then you don't have the hollowed out aft section. Yes, there's an extrusion on the inside, um, but you can reef that much. It, there, again, it goes back to the argument uh, either way. So yeah. the writing moment in and of itself is uh, the less my concerns. Uh, you're more than compensating by the fact that the boat's 
design is a much stiffer design with a forty yeah. percent ballast displacement yeah. ratio. Literally, there's nobody else right now. Any of our even our best competitors, Hallberg, Amel, yeah. Oyster, they're anywhere from twenty five to thirty. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it makes a difference. It makes a difference performance. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we have really oversized stout rigging here. Yeah, uh, I can see. Yeah, not only is it really stout, but they're mechanical fittings. We do that as standard. I'm fascinated by the fact that a lot of builders still use swedge fittings as standard, yeah. and then make mechanical fittings an option. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're going to start spending this kind of money, you really want to know that you're not having to think about those things because most people are not informed about that. Yes. So, Interesting um, you say that because we're, we're just re-rigging Fair Isle at the moment and uh, and I've got a rigger who's rigging uh, boats for the, for the Golden Globe race who's, who's yeah. very, very good. And he says the same thing, stay lock. He yeah. says, you know, go go for the stay lock ones, uh, certainly low That's down. It. You can yeah. change out the wire, but you can, the rest of the stuff you can keep forever. Yeah. That's going to stay the length of the boat. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you're right. I mean, this is massively oversized, isn't it? Yeah. That's, that's yeah. huge. <laughs> yeah. Any size of my finger next to that, that's that's enormous. Yeah, very good. So a port here, actually one of the interesting conversations for a lot of folks, they like an open deck area. So yeah. a lot of owners don't do the drades. They'll just eliminate the drades. Yeah. And uh, you know, and again, good arguments both ways. But it's nice when you have the flush deck. In the new builds now, uh, the forward deck is actually built still as a crowned hatch but we actually still recess it with drains so yeah it's still it, it's it's the best of both worlds it's recessed so it's a flush deck and yet it's still crowned so water can't collect around yeah it. Um, and then owners can decide if they want to have the derage or not yeah um, again yeah. Uh, just a personal decision yeah it's good I mean we've got derage I, I would never be without them I think no and I, I like them as well but yeah. a lot of a lot of owners don't uh, yeah they'll, they'll go with the AC and the dehumidifier yeah now I'm, I'm shamelessly just going to pick your brains for the best of everything here then because mm -hmm. the other thing we're doing when we're rigging is putting uh, um, a new furl is on and yep. this this actually looks quite quite a beast yeah that's that's looks like you know so a good little model, unit. That, as you can see yeah that's the same as what's up forward on the uh, the Genoa so yeah yeah we there's no reason to undersize this uh, uh, again it's a nominal cost to just go bigger and stronger yeah uh, so yeah. The, the drum diameter makes all the difference for you know, exactly yeah for the loads for you so yeah the newer models now are what they call for I think 412 so it's even a, a better drum design with a better plate Wow, there's a lot of space, lot which of space. is nice. Yeah. yeah, and I can't help, the galley is just, can we go there first? Yes, we certainly <laughs> can. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Uh, yeah. So first of all, every because you know, everyone's custom built, right? So yeah. owners choose, they want to do granite, they want to do corian. Those are two primary choices. What I do like about the corian is you can curve it on the inside, make it easier to clean. Yeah, exactly. The yeah, stone I can see that. is, I, I, like the fiddles right here. Yeah. You know, it's darker here, it's a little darker in the center cockpits, but again, it's all personal preference. Um, it's 11 feet in length, so you don't find too many galleys that are true 11 feet. It's incredible once you put this down as well. I know yeah. the fridge is open. The, Ooh, the yeah, very heavy. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, you've got all this space and, and leading up to the cooker here. So loads and of course two sinks. Really two important sinks. to have two sinks. And the, and the new sinks now are even larger uh, because right. we built a slightly larger coffee cabinet. Normally this is recessed a few more inches. And we've actually okay. enlarged this galley island already in the new designs. So the new sinks, 31 inches long, 15 inches in depth, yep. 10 inches uh, down. Um, and yet we actually have more counter space than we had before and I'm sort of yeah. this this whole galley island is a real nice feature of this design um, yeah I mean it's just nice both if the nav gets to use the space the galley uh, gets to use it but more importantly anybody who's in here you know you can still of communicate and yeah. you know next thing you know it's 15 feet across here but you can still and you've got if you've been preparing or washing up you can just get things in or put things out there as well yeah. so you don't have to come it across here so uh, often the ice makers are done here in this particular owner because it's custom built to do the ice maker under the table um, but we like to have some full height uh, cabinets and then the owners have a choice they can take these cabinets all the way down to the counter and do their drawers here right. and if we do all stainless refrigeration drawers for freezer refrigeration you don't need to have the top loading which means right. the drawers here are not really that much of a bother as far as yeah no such. I can see that would be an advantage which yeah is nice. uh, yeah force 10 right. stoves um, and what's nice here this is the the extra length gives you this much more storage so the pond pan storage is here okay which is i mean it's sizable i mean i can't it goes all all the way up to the hull so i can't even touch the back of this top shelf area yeah. here so you have a tremendous amount of space there to work with and, and then, then you, a lovely stateroom with a access stateroom here yeah each side again really important to me i can even sit here yeah <laughs> and we do longer settees there as well. I've done, yeah. again, uh, they're all custom built, so I've got owners will do cabinets and cabinets, settee, settee, different shapes and settees. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got enough headroom here. I'm just over six feet and I'm on the first step. And I was still, just saying, yeah. Still standing up, right? You don't even have to duck to get into bed. Yeah. So we have three hanging lockers. Okay. 
Okay. So that's a full length mirror there, and you've got a sizable hanging lock. All of these shelves yep. are locked in, but they're also removable with a hanging bar here. So you can do, they're all, all of our lockers are cedar lined, which is nice. All right. And um, also you've got the louver doors. The louver doors. So you yeah. have a lot of um, But I do, I do raised panel as well for owners with thin louvers also. I also okay. do the European style cabinetry. And then we have a shoe locker down here, which is nice. Yep. Yeah. As well. And then you've got in the front here, you can either do drawers or cabinets. He's got four drawers here. Yeah. Very popular. Another size. And you've, of course, you've got storage under the bed as well. Um, well, actually, yes. There's tankage and storage. So there's water tankage here. There's okay. 600 gallons of tankage on the boat altogether. So it's mm -hmm. pretty much 300, 300. Right. Um, some owners will, owners can vary that. You know, with water makers, sometimes they'll think, okay, I want to increase that, maybe go 350, even 400 sometimes on the fuel. So right here, it's pretty common to have these uh, ocean air hatches. Um, they're popular. Do you have uh, stick? Yeah, so actually, well, they split. That. So it goes to a shade across yep. where you do the sh shade or screen. And for the and mosquito split, net there. Yeah. <laughs> and then they split apart and they store inside if I push it in. So and we do okay. those in the forward and aft cabins, sometimes the port cabin at owner's choice, but they're nice to have. Definitely. Uh, so this is to the owner's head. Now I'll send you images of the new design, which is actually much more open. And it's all glass now, all plexi, okay. so it fears open. We do all custom uh, tile in here now, uh, which is beautiful. That shower is 30 by 36 inches, so okay. it's sizable. And then we do the washer dryers and that linen locker outside, outboard. Oh, okay, yes, you could do it in there. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that would be a good space. But in fact, you have it, I saw, they have it in the forward cabin. So the washing machine, this is again is a, is a massive bed for the forward cabin. Um, and the washing machine is, oh, I found it, in here. There you go. So that's... Lots uh, of places to put a washing machine, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> it is nice to be actually my size and I still can sleep, you know, head to, you know, yes, head to exactly, foot. Yes, exactly, that way across. around, yeah. And there's a lot of space underneath. So if the washer dryer's aft, this is all we do on a lifting hinge right here, and we do the water makers right here. So, okay. yeah, great access. I'll send yep. you some images of that. And then the owners get to create their cabinetry. Yeah. Uh, but what's also very nice is this is a tremendous amount of storage here. So we do stainless plating here for a workbench. So nice. you have a work, work area. But also this whole berth lifts up and you have a tremendous amount of storage underneath. So people come down below in a boat like this, say 56 feet, right? They think, oh, well, I went on a Benito 45 and the salon felt so much bigger, right? You get that kind of response. <laughs> what they yes. don't think about is those boats, and you know, not to take away from that, but production boats typically will push all of their seating out to the chines of the hull, right? They don't think about longer term storage. So our owners, because we custom build, they can choose how deep they want to make their seating here. Right. So in the case of over here, yeah. all the tankage is below the sole. So okay. we have 600 gallons below the sole here. So it's like I said, 300 fuel, 300 water. You can vary that if you want okay. to. Um, but in addition to that, now this owner put his TV here and it's on a lifting TV. Mm -hmm. So you push a button, it pops up. But normally that's all storage back there. Right. Um, but right. there's also still some huge storage here and here, which I yeah. can show you. But also all of the area underneath here is fully empty. So this all lifts up. So it's all those, fully open yeah. all the way fore and aft. So it's really good for long passages. You can store your yeah, dry cans, food. Goods, and all, yeah, exactly. In there. Pieces of beer, water. Yeah, wine, perfect. Perfect. All the rest. Same thing with this side, the port side as well. So again, we have the air conditioning in this unit right here, but outside there's more storage underneath the seating, all behind the seating. And again, these lockers are, you can see how they're, how they're brought out from the hull for, for storage. So of course, mm -hmm. you know, end up doing this type of thing. Yeah. So. Uh, and then very common, then this is, we always want to make sure this is at least 6263 six, 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 for a seabirth, right, for, for uh, length here. Yeah. And this also can pull out if you want to design to do that. I've got a dozen different table designs, you know, and these tables normally, he did an ice maker here, but mm -hmm. normally it's on a, a um, retracting post. So you can sink, so you can you can sink can down, become a double, it can be a big playpen couch. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so this is the nav station then. It looks a, a nice, nice space again. Well, so as you, we've discussed, a lot of boats, contemporary boats now, are moving away from nav, proper nav stations. We yeah. don't just want to have a proper nav station. We actually want to have a real work area because there are very few people who are, I guess you'd say, truly retired. People always want mm -hmm. to work on things. If you're truly cruising, you want to have a place to be able to sit down, type, email, totally, work. Yeah. So yep. we're trying to make a real space without using your salon table, which what most people do. Um, so you've got you've got great storage. You've got if you lift that up, yep. you see the computer 
The computer desk here, the slides in and out. Okay, that's great. Which is wonderful. Uh, this is just general storage inside, but we make it bifold so it's not interfering with the instruments yep. when it's open, uh, which is also nice. This also folds down. What's wonderful here is all the wiring is tinned wire. Tinned wire, double insulated, every wire is very well labeled. Okay. And right behind you here, mm -hmm. just seems like a small little spot, but it's actually where all the chart kits are. They're, all the chart books and chart kits are all underneath here in the space. And now the other important thing, of course, is access to the engine. And that's actually an important aspect for us as well. As I said, <laughs> our history is we started off in the chart industry, so yeah. mechanical you know, asset access is very important. So if you don't mind stepping out here. Yep, sure. Um, not a believer in engine rooms in this size boat. You've got to go a lot larger to justify it. And as I said, yeah. you can have an engine room, but the bottom line is the engine's down there. So you have to sit or be on, on your ass or your knees. So um, yeah. to do it right, we just set this up so the main axis is right through the front. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So first thing we have is the dual fuel filter system right here. Right. Right underneath the nav station is a switch. So I have an auxiliary fuel pump that's built in right here. So I can at any time throw in that auxiliary fuel pump. I can run any tank, polish it, run it back to any tank I want to. So I can do tank transfers, I can move fuel around the boat. There are four tanks out of the 300 gallons. And right. uh, so I can polish, I can move fuel. Also with that auxiliary fuel pump, it helps keep fuel running, keep the uh, Yanmar fuel pump not working as hard if you have to power for long distances or for several hours at a time, which is nice. It's also strong enough to ever run the engine dry. Yep. You never have to bleed the injectors again. It's actually strong enough to blow all the air out the injectors. So okay. no more bleeding. Um, now this, particular engine, it was one of the early Yanmar built by BMW, so it's a fully encased engine. Now that's not the case anymore. Okay. So any, the Yanmars from 115 above are all BMW built, uh, marinized. And uh, so the accessibility, so normally you have your belts right here, you have your injectors right here, uh, your filters are all right here. You'll see that when I forward you on the new, new images. So the new engines have the filters right here, injectors, belts, everything's right here. Only reason you have to open this door at all is your impeller, that's it, and also the through hole. That's okay. it. Starboard side, oil dipstick, that's about it. Okay. And then as we move back, oh, uh, in addition, what's also important, we do a full start and stop in the engine here. So if you want to work in the engine by yourself, mm -hmm. have a full start and stop here. We have a full okay. secondary fresh water pump system. We also, which I'll show you, we have a built in oil change pump. So we have a built in oil change pump for your engine, your gen set, and your transmission. There's a full drain and a full fill. Wow. That cuts out a lot of mess. It does. And you don't have to lift the steps up. Did you see no. that, Steve? You can and just they, slide it around. Yeah, it's just that lock is in place a good here. Plan. <laughs> yeah. So access to the gen set and the shaft and the rest, probably the second most important, and that's through this set of doors. Oh, I see, I'm gonna let that's you get a through. Second here. set of Second set of lights here, but um, so what's key here is this door. All these doors are on bayonet hinges, so they pop right off. You have to have to do real work right yeah. here. Okay. If you have to kneel down here, it's pretty typical. What's nice is all these boats have Jeffa drive systems, so it's all basically straight drive. There's no chain, no cable. Um, it's all solid, basically rack and pinion drive. Uh, drive for a lack of a better way of putting it. Right. So this is your drive system right here. Yep. That's your autopilot right there. Same size autopilot we use in our uh, 63s that we were building. That's only four bolts, two wires. So if you're cruising, oh. you want to carry a spare autopilot, easy to do, and that's all it is. It's not under your berth. You don't have to listen to a, to a hydraulic ram going back and forth. It's a wow. wonderful unit. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> and then right here, you've got generator filter, a generator filter, generator intake, generator access right here. And those doors all get to the shaft. You can see the shaft drive, the shaft, uh, and the shaft seal right here, mm -hmm. and your auto pouch right here. And the doors open up on the other side as well. Okay. And that's 90% of what you work on in here. Yeah. So it's great access without kind of enclosing yourself in an engine room where it gets hot, it gets smelly, it gets oily. Yeah. If you lose power, you've got no light. You don't have to worry about that with this. Okay. Well, we both walked off that boat in Annapolis and thought this is the nicest boat mm -hmm. we'd seen, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Ticked all the boxes. It was safe. It was a good, well-built cruising boat with a fantastic centre cockpit. Yeah, brilliant in, <laughs> in every way, really. But I mean, to be honest, it's, it's not the sort of boat that we're we would actually be looking for for doing what we're doing and up until now we've sort of been trying to focus on boats for cruising long-term cruising short-handed as we as we yeah. are and this is i mean it's too much of a boat for that i think 56 foot is, is too much yeah i think you need friends we clearly haven't got any friends <laughs> you know you need friends or someone else on the boat yeah, with you crew, for, for a, a lot of it yeah. but it's still a lovely boat and if you were looking at a boat where you could work as well that office space next to the nav station i haven't seen 
one like that before that mm. was really geared for it. They've got you know, lots of good ideas, yeah, really with, good ideas with what they've done for that boat. The uh, the forward cabin as well that has the, the stainless steel top. Great idea to have something like that as a workstation because yeah. that's definitely what we would have done done with that. The engine, it's changed my, my view actually <laughs> of, of engine rooms. I've always thought engine room, great idea. We've got an engine room. Well, engine room doesn't stop you from having to squeeze into horrible tight places. I mean, with ours, with an engine room, you know, it opens up one side, but you can never get to both. So I still have to lean over the engine to yeah. get to things like the starter motor. Um, yeah. and, and I think the key is, as, as you were saying there, is to have it so you've got access nicely both sides with panels to the front. Well, nicely. three sides, actually, yeah, three sides. under the stairs as well. You can get so to that engine anywhere. easier than you can yeah. get to ours, and it's without an engine. And it's allowed it to be open and have that fantastic, you know, sort of area, yeah. the, the island bit in the middle, which is why you've got that workstation, why you've got such a good galley. Yes. And it's why, you know, things like the Kraken, which have got the engine room which I always thought was a good idea but we both looked at that and thought the interior I mean it's not as nice as this is it no it isn't it's nowhere near as ergonomic <laughs> as, as nice to live in as a, as a space so you know I think they've done that brilliantly so Hylas. we'll have to see how blue water yachts actually develop the Hylas 56 yeah. because they are making changes a lot of the things that were happening um, internally yeah. you know are custom built as he said yeah. but they are making it a little bit wider yeah. because one thing By I did the stanchions yeah. on, on the bulwark so they go through yeah because I did find that having the, having the shrouds coming right down onto the walkway was a little bit difficult yeah you're um, trying to get around them yeah so they're looking like they're sort of trying to improve on what was already exactly. a very good design I mean it's already a really really good boat yes. so that's great I mean basically what's happened is they bought up that hull and they're now doing that well I mean, it remains to be seen how, how well they do with that. Hylas have got the pedigree. They've been doing it for years. Blue Water yeah. just starting. But I hope that they do well. They didn't have a boat for us to see. They had a stand only at the uh, Annapolis mm. Boat Show. So that's why we were seeing a Hylas as, as sort of the, you know, this is what it's going to be like. Yeah. I hope they can deliver. Um, because, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. I hope, actually, that they would do it with some of the smaller boats. I mean, they used to have Hylas, the 49, which was an encapsulated keel. It's a second-hand boat. Fantastic. Right size, mm. right configuration. And it is a shame, I think, the Hylas now, I mean, what they've got is the 57 and the 60. They've ditched the, the 46 and the 49, uh, and, but the 57 and the 60 have both got twin rudders. So mm. for, for the sort of cruising we're doing, we just wouldn't want that. Maybe we'll have to get used to bigger boats. Or we'll get a second-hand one, <laughs> like we did, and bought our, our 20-year-old no. as Christian 48. Yes, we're going to stay with this boat. We That's are. always been the case. We're but not no. looking at these boats for something to buy. We like our boat and we'll stick with it, with all its faults. <laughs>